he doesn't really talk about uh, measuring the insulin levels in the blood. Because when the insulin's in the blood, he just says pretty much that it's going to shut everything down. Like it's not going to let you burn fat. But there has to be a certain point because I don't think insulin levels can completely ever drop to zero because your blood sugar levels are never going to drop to zero. So it's more of the regulation of it. You have to keep it steady in order to be able to burn that fat. And that's another thing too. Spikes in insulin levels are going to be huge when it comes down to it. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit um, amount and sensitivity to insulin. So your body begins out, that it starts out that it's sensitive uh, to insulin, meaning that it's going to be able to, th th a small amount is going to be able to regulate what you need as far as your blood sugar levels go. Uh, this is going to be different from person to person. It's going to be different from organ to organ. Um, so fat cells tend to be more sensitive. This means is as you age and your muscle cells, your liver, cell, liver cells, everything is becoming less sensitive to insulin, they're not going to be able to absorb it as easily on the same amount. So as you need more insulin to uh, fill out, to, to get rid of it, well, you might need it more for your muscle cells, but you still don't need that much for your fat cells. And as you become less and less sensitive in muscle cells, well, the fat cells now can just start storing it because the muscle needs more insulin to pack it away. It can't do it. I'm having more problems here. Um, metabolic rate is also going to decrease um, with it, like from person to person. As your metabolic rate is decreasing, you have less energy. You have less energy, why? Is it because you're not eating enough? Is it because your insulin levels are always jacked up? They're just burning through that glucose. It wants you to eat more, wants you to store fat, while well, your body doesn't want to burn it because the insulin levels are so high. Now it's just going into fat cells again and really creating uh, kind of a vicious cycle. Uh, so another quote that we have here, uh, not all of us get fat when we eat carbs. Uh, this was one thing, this is one of the things that I, I really, uh, I'm not sure that I agree with him on. Um, no, I, no, I'm sorry. I agree with him that not all of us get fat when we eat carbs. Why does this happen though? Because everybody is an individual. And I feel like that's kind of not taken into account here. Um, so everybody in here is going to be different with how they eat, what their diet looks like, uh, what they can tolerate. From what I get from him, he really feels that everybody needs to be pretty low carb. Uh, and I disagree. I, you can lean out as long as you're doing it correctly. You have to be timing. A, a, everybody's going to respond to a different macronutrient ratio. So for fats, carbs, protein, it doesn't matter. Some people, yeah, they might do great on a fairly hard, high carb diet. I mean, you look how many high carb diet books are out there. Yeah, you know, it may not work for a lot of people, but it's still working for some people. So that's where I have to look is still you have to individualize everything. Is it working for you? If it is, hey, great. Go for that low carb diet. Stick with it. If you feel good, if everything's going well for you, go for it. If you need maybe a little more of a mix, you want some carbs, you want some fat, you want some protein, keeping it all fairly similar, hey, if you're still losing fat, if you're happy with how you feel, how you look on that, that's what you gotta do. Because everything is gonna change person to person. Everybody's backgrounds are different from what their ancestors ate too. These are things that are definitely going to be taken into account where if they're used to eating something, well, and this kind of goes back to the genes that we were talking about before. If their genes are more sensitive to certain foods, then they're going to want to stick with those. All right, let's talk about uh, types of carbs a little bit. So the most damaging that he, he talked about were the refined, anything refined, whether it's uh, pastas, breads, anything like that, anything liquid. So. We yeah, have beer, possibly, as a big liquid source of carbohydrates, and uh, starches. Uh, starches are going to be another one where it's much more easily digested. Doesn't take into doesn't necessarily talk about uh, how protein and fat affect these, though. So I agree with the refined. I'm not I'm not a fan of the refined carbs at all either. I think that they are going to be the most problematic, as are a lot of liquid carbs. Uh, starches, I think can be used a little bit more effectively, potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, any of the root vegetables really. But you still have to be careful with them because they still can have high glycemic load. If you're not balancing out with the proper protein, proper fat for your body, it's gonna definitely uh, still cause that rapid increase 
blood sugar. Blood sugar goes up, insulin goes up, whole cycle starts again. Um, with these types of carbs too, uh, taking it back to even poverty uh, and still obese, you're looking, these are the cheaper sources of the carbs too. These aren't your uh, better veggies, your better fruits, that kind of thing. They're going to be a lot less expensive. People in, uh, that are less fortunate, they're not going to be able to pay for these. Here we go with the malnourishment again. Uh, another type of carb, uh, fructose. He really does not like fructose, uh, as it can only be metabolized in the liver. Doesn't really carry a whole lot of nutrients. Again, th now this is coming, fructose coming from fruits. Are fruits bad? Depends. And that's where, that's where I think it's kind of up in the air. Can, if somebody eats only fruits, is there a good chance they're going to be more likely to put on eating just fruits? Versus more likely to put on fat eating fruits versus just veggies? Absolutely. But this is where I came back to still, everybody's going to be different. Uh, nobody is going to react the same exact way to the fruits they eat, to the veggies they eat. So I think it's really a dangerous thing. Maybe you can only have one piece of fruit a day. Hey, that's going to be you. You're going to have to find that out. Uh, another thing I just put in here, sugar triggers a reward center in your brain. Same as nicotine, same as cocaine. That's why people love it. Uh, it. It just gives them the satisfaction that they really want. And hey, it's tough to go against that. So why are you eating sugar? Why are you eating those refined carbs? Because it tastes good. Because it satisfies a big part of your brain. Uh, so kind of just talking about the types of diets. And we did this a little bit. Low carb, that's what he's advocating. Staying with the low carb. Uh, keeping your meats up high, uh, keeping your fat up high, uh, but then you look at the low fat. It, it still works. Um, one of the arguments that he uses is because even in a low fat diet, since the, the fat and protein are generally so low, well, if that's 15% of your diet, you still have another 85%. If you're cutting that, and that's basically coming from carbs, if you're cutting that, well, now you're just eating a fraction of the carbs that you were beforehand. So it helps. And, and this makes sense. If if you're eating so now, where is, now comes down to calories in, calories out again. Where it's a fine line. Are you losing the weight because you're eating less calories, or are you losing the weight because you're not eating as many carbs? So it's it's really tough to say uh, which is at hand here. But uh, I, I I tend to agree that the carb cutting uh, really is what's more effective there. Where that's what's causing dramatic decrease because the insulin levels are coming down. You're going to be burning uh, more fatty acids, uh, more than triglycerides are going to be leaving the cell versus all of the uh, glucose being used for your fuel. So what do we eat? Uh, there's a study in here uh, talked about by Lauren Cordain looked at uh, a lot of just the primitive cultures around the world that what they ate and just said, quote, high amounts of animal foods. It doesn't really say what high amounts would be, but high amounts of animal foods. And what they're eating, they're eating the fattiest cuts of meat they can find. They're eating the organs, so that was kidding, whatever it may be. And because they know that's what's going to give them the most energy, the most uh, nutrients for the most bang for their buck, basically. Uh, came down, average is about 19 to 35% protein in these diets, 28 to 58% fat. So fat is definitely going to be one of the highest things. And then 22 to 40 percent carbs. So really, it's looking at a fairly even breakdown among these. It's not looking at 80 percent carbs. It's not looking at food pyramid where you just have six to 11 servings a day of carbs. Like that's what you need. That's what you need. No, no, you don't. Like if you, if you look at all primitive cultures, and now you're looking back at our genes again. So what what did we come from? If they didn't eat all of the carbs and survived two and a half million years doing pretty well. I think that maybe we should stick with that. Um, and they're not eating any of the refined, any of the, the liquid sugars. Came from seeds, nuts, roots, tubers, uh, bulbs, miscellaneous vegetable parts, etc. miscellaneous plant parts, and fruits. These were the things that, is listed, that they were eating. And for the most part, they were staying pretty lean. It was when uh, basically the white man brought westernized culture uh, two lives, and this is looking at some Western A. Price stuff too. Um, he studied people where they just went downhill once they were introduced to white flour, white mm -hmm. sugar. It just brought a dramatic difference to people that hadn't been touched by this at all. Uh, it, it really, the types 
of foods that we're eating are really going to be, I think, more dramatic necessarily than the breakdown of the uh, of the macronutrients. It really has to just focus. You have to focus on those whole foods, not looking at anything uh, refined. Uh, I wanted to touch on heart disease and cholesterol. So he, he talks about these in the book a little bit. And what's the number one? Uh, well, not the number one. I'm sorry. One of the top things you have to do. You have to lose weight. How do you lose weight? Well, is it going to work if you go on those high carb diets? Doctor come, walks in. You walk in. Your doctor says, "Hey, you got to lose weight. You got to lose 15 pounds, whatever it may be." Well, how do you do it? Do you do it by eating so-called bad saturated fats, all this and that, or do you jack up? Hey, I'm gonna eat a loaf of bread tonight because hey, that says I'm supposed to eat all my servings of uh, my the bread, pastas, everything like that. Well, what's gonna really help you lose that weight? Uh, so, decrease fat, decrease decrease fat overall, decrease saturated fat. These are the same what we need to do. But unfortunately, obesity, heart disease, uh, diabetes still continue to rise despite drastic redu drastic reductions in fat intake. So. Is it really the fat that are causing that's causing these? Is that what is that what is causing, causing the arteries to clog? Everything like that? Probably not, because the, this didn't really exist 100, 150 years ago. But now we're introducing all these refined carbs into the diet. Boom! All these things are shooting up. Uh, triglycerides is another thing. What's the number one thing that raises triglycerides? Carbohydrates. HDL uh, is actually decreased carbohydrates. This is supposed to be the good cholesterol. High density liver protein. That's what we want, but higher carbohydrate uh, intake is going to reduce this. And this is actually the largest predictor. This was the number one predictor of heart disease. So if you're letting your HDL drop by taking in all these carbs, well, what's your risk for heart disease? It's going up. And then LDL, the supposed bad cholesterol. Problem is there are two different types of LDL, which most people, most doctors even really probably aren't going to even look at. There's a large point. There's a small dense. Large point. They really feel that does not uh, have any bearing on the heart disease uh, as far as what it's going to, if, if that's going to cause it. But the small dense, this is 